Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, just wanted to say sorry about slacking on the content lately. Um, we've been a little busy with doing websites and uh, product photography work. So business has picked back up for us, which is good. And hopefully um, it has for you as well. Today I wanted to make a video about the latest shoot that I just did. It was for a design house here in London. And um, while doing it, um, it made me think, you know, there are certain homes that are a little easier to photograph than others, be it with uh, larger, if you know, if a house has larger windows and larger uh, natural light coming in, uh, areas of natural light coming in, it's a lot easier to photograph than when you're uh, mixing different types of light, like the incandescent or tungsten lights. But anyways, it made me think, you know, it's um, something worthwhile sharing for any of you that want to start making money with your photography. Um, you know, I highly recommend the real estate or interior uh, photography or interior design type photographies. Um, those projects uh, definitely yield uh, decent money. I would say the interior photography or kitchen design stuff makes a lot more money than the real estate um, per project generally, unless you get a larger listing um, or if you're willing to or able to do um, larger quantities and have a process where you can turn around real estate shoots really quick, then definitely there's good money to be had there too. Um, but as far as like effort um, and just enjoyment for me personally, um, I like, the interior design or kitchen design world because you know, it's very cool to you know who doesn't love a nice house and it's very cool to see what a designer can do with the space you know what it's it's artistry really the fact that they can see a mundane or bland looking space and then totally uh, change it and just demolish it all and then rebuild it into uh, you know a beautiful home it's just really cool so it allows for more creativity on your behalf um, when you're capturing it um, you're looking for different angles, you're looking for different perspectives, you're really showing off the space and the work. Whereas with the real estate, as far as just selling the home, you're generally just taking wide angle shots and that, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, for the most part. So anyways, I'll show you examples of what I mean by that, but I feel there are very distinct differences between being a real estate photographer and then getting into more interior design type photography. Um, and, uh, and yeah, as an extra also, if to make extra money when you are working with interior design clients, um, for myself, I have started to um, add in a little video bundle so I can do a uh, little boomerang or looping videos of the kitchen. Um, again, I'll show you when we get to the computer, but um, it's more value add. So then therefore your package pricing can increase. Um, I also do a quick tour. So it's a quick highlight video of the kitchen, for example, or the spaces that they're creating. Um, it just creates more content for them for their Instagram, their social media, what, what have you. But, um, but yeah, the more value add that you can um, provide to them. And I mean, you're already on site, so you might as well grab video and photo if you can. And uh, you splice it up in a bunch of different uh, little mini clips and that's tons of content for them to use. So. Um, anyways, thought I'd share my process with you um, because I know we've talked about a lot of Fuji gear and this and that, um, but I want to get into more of the, the, you know, the tactful stuff, the stuff that can help you make money and, um, and yeah, help you create and that kind of thing. And also if uh, web design or that aspect, that side of the house is uh, interesting to you, um, that's the core of what we do. Uh, the visuals are kind of just the add-on you know the, the big ticket items for us is the website creation and the rebranding process and all that so if that's of interest um, let me know and i'll definitely talk more about that um, i do want to get aya into some of these videos she's been busy with her candles and her um, hand soaps and sanitizers so she hasn't had too much time either but we do want to find some time to sit down talk about both her can her business aya candle studio and you know our business here atomic pixel and uh, talk about our journey and just kind of what's been going on and, and how things have progressed and also you know share with you if you're starting something new this year um, how to get your first clients your first wholesale clients your first shops to hold you know to to retail your products if you will or if you're doing digital goods or photography then you know how do you outreach um, but you know a quick note on that the first thing i'll say is no matter what you're doing try to be the local hero first so get known in your area your city your town and get your name out there shake hands meet people um, I know maybe you can't shake hands right now physically. It's a weird time in the world, but you know, meet people, get to know them, network. And um, a lot of times you have to do stuff for free. You know, whatever industry you're looking to do more to get into or the type of work that you want to do more of, do some free stuff for them. You know what I mean? Like I did some free shoots, uh, video content for this gym, but that segued into other people that are in like the yoga fitness industry seeing that and they're reaching out to me asking for uh, help with their content. So, Sometimes you gotta do stuff if, you know, you don't have it, you gotta build that portfolio first, right? So these are things that I know a lot of other YouTubers and everyone has talked about, 
but um, definitely has worked for us. And yeah, we'll reiterate those in future videos. Um, but yeah, let's get into the equipment that we use and how we edit it. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's quite simple. It's going to be easier than, than you might think. Okay, so let's get into it. Alrighty, so before we jump into the editing, the, uh, the actual um, equipment that I'll be using is actually just the X-T3, um, sometimes X-H1, mainly the X-T3, uh, the 16 to 55 2.8, the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2, and a tripod. So that's pretty much it. Um, there are people who get into more flash photography, um, but uh, I try to keep it really simple and try to keep it looking as natural as possible. And it's just a matter of taste. When we look at real estate photography, you just do a quick Google search. Um, you're going to see this, this kind of stuff where it's a lot of super wide angle. Um, the composition really doesn't matter. Maybe it does, you know, maybe this is, looks more like a composite. Um, but you get the idea either it's from a corner and a super wide angle, or you get a lot of the, you know, pulling or the kind of synthetic background where they are doing an HDR and I do HDR as well, but, um, I try to keep it looking natural. I don't like this. Okay. This might be a typical thing you might see. So it's very, I don't even know how to just, it's just HDR -y, you know, you can tell it's an HDR photo. It's, it, this is the windows have been pulled back. Likely a, a flash has been shot here. Um, to expose for the windows and then they merge and kind of mask out different areas that uh, that they want so you're keeping everything pretty much exposed you know you're supposed to be the indoors they're exposing for outdoors um and and that's fine and some people might like that um this one is a little blah this one actually is probably a better version of it this is probably something you'd see more often so you can tell that they've exposed inside maybe a couple flashes to illuminate back here i think there's a hot spot here um, and then they mask the windows to bring the windows back, right? And that's totally okay. If you like that, that's totally fine. For me personally, um, I I like lights and shadows and, and kind of what the eye would see. So I just want to kind of go through a couple examples. Again, obviously, very obvious that the windows have been uh, composed and, and brought back here. Um, you know, for me, it's... It, this is, has a little HDR, you can tell a little vignette and pulled back, but getting better, getting more personally, again, personal taste, but getting better for me. Um, maybe even something like this, this might be more my flavor. Sure, even in this case, the windows are blown out, but that's what you would see, you know what I mean? You're, you're focusing on here, it's kind of natural light coming through, and you're working with what you have, and that's, that's what it is. And so the biggest difference, and I'll just show quickly here, you know, this might be more of an interior type design shot versus a real estate shot. It's it's more straight on. And I have a couple of examples I'll show you in a sec, but I find real estate is more kind of three quarters or just like from a corner of the room looking out. Um, interior design is more straight on or finding different angles. You, you're, you're the more, more artistic liberty to, to shoot through things and um, use bokeh, whereas you know, with interior, with uh, real estate, it's just flat, wide, show the space, you know, you shoot and bang, 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 and then you get out and, and that's it, move on to the next house. Whereas interior design, you're trying to put a little more effort into composing and, and finding um, interesting angles and views to really show off the artistry, the creation, the, the decorations um, within the home. So this, let's do a quick search. So that is real estate photography, but let's see what happens when I put... Uh, to your design photography. So even just from this alone, you can kind of get that vibe. It's very different. I, I can already tell this one, and I already know it because I love them. It's Becky and Chris. It's their shot for sure. Um, yeah, see, Becky and Chris. I recognized it. And it's, see, it's different angles, right? It's f straight. It's going to show the room, but in a more artistic way. Um, even these, sure, it is a kind of a corner angle-ish but they've tried to, you know, add some elements of human elements here. And, um, you know, they might, they have used HDR, but like it's see how the outside isn't as strong as it is inside, right? It's, it's not like the exact same exposure. Obviously this can be a little less because you're drawing more attention to the indoors, to the elements, to the beautiful furniture and, you know, the flooring and all that. So the aesthetic is, is way different. Um, this is another example. It's a straight on shot. It's nicely lit, but you know, the outdoor is kind of left outdoors, a little faded. It does, doesn't, um, you know, detract your eye from the main uh, 
component, which is the, the nice furniture and the decor. So it just has a different vibe. Um, so hope you understand what I'm, you know, what I'm kind of alluding to what I'm talking about, um, but that very different feel, right? Like in this is, this is beautiful. You know, it's composed well, it's, it's, it's got some shadows and that's totally okay. It's, it's how your eye would see it. And instead of being maybe in the corner and shooting the whole room and don't get me wrong, you do get those shots because even in, in interior design, you do want to show the space, but you're adding these in to supplement. Um, and chances are they'll use these types of shot for their Instagram and that kind of thing. So that's what I keep in mind when I do my shots for my clients. I try to give as much value, um, as much content as I can so that they can, you know, um, show off their portfolio. And, um, you know, the more I can give them, the better uh, it, the experience and, you know, more bang for their buck. And therefore, hopefully, you know, return, um, you know, returning clients and loyal clients, right? Um, I don't, I don't limit photos i don't do any of that jazz even for my wedding days um i just find it's a poor experience like why they they paid for it i'm already there so um i know yes a lot more editing or whatever but you know i'm, I'm playing the long game right i want to provide value when i can and uh hopefully they see that and do future business with me so um yeah i kind of cringe when i see photographers and, and people that you know, only do 20 photos or whatever, and then they make them pick and choose. And there are places for that. Sometimes I do a bunch of like bulk shots for product photography or like certain lifestyle stuff. And if there's a pre-agreement of a certain amount of photos, then sure. And then I can always keep the gallery, the link up, and they can always buy per piece later on. Um, so it just kind of depends on how you negotiate and what the terms are. But for the most part, um, I'm pretty generous with all my work. So that's just how we, we do things. Okay, so let's get into Lightroom. I've got some fans going here to cool the computer, so hopefully it's not too loud or hopefully you don't hear it. Um, okay, so I've got a small selection here. This is the Silverleaf home. There's one room there, it's the same room. And then this is the design house shoot I just did. So what I wanted to bring to, uh, or what I wanted to show you here is each photo in, in this is uh, composed of three different uh, exposures. So I do HDR. So I do um, on the XT3, I do exposure bracketing. And so it's, I believe, one and a third stops either way. So what I'll do is, so for example, this shot, this is at zero, the at the, the metering at level zero. And this is one and a third under and one and a third over. Same with this. That's zero, under, over. And this, so un, so at zero, under, and over. So you get the idea. So before I merge them, before I get into that, I wanted to show you what I mean is, yes, sometimes, you know, you still got to show the space and kind of, you know, the flow through the house and that kind of thing. Um, but it's not just a straight corner shot. And you'll notice that, you know, it the lines are a little off. I use a 16 here. So really, it should be very minimal distortion. Um, with real estate, you end up using something super wide between a 10, 12 millimeter, that kind of thing. Um, and I do have it, which as I mentioned, I use the Rokin on 12 millimeter, but I save those for like powder rooms, small bathrooms, the very tight areas where you can't get away with anything but, and then sure, I'll, I'll use a super wide and then I'll, I'll correct it in post so it doesn't look so wonky and, and crazy. Because the difference here is if I shot this one here is on the 16 to 55. So all these actually are on the 16 to 55 and they are at 16 for all of them. So you can see it here at 16, uh, 7.1. So, um, okay. So this one's, yeah, still around 16, 17.6, 17 etc. So yeah, usually generally around a 16 millimeter to start and between the seven, eight, uh, F stop. So F78 is usually my, my beginning point, and then we'll go from there and make adjustments. Mm -hmm. But so this one, but I wanted to show you here. So for this one, you know, you're showing the space, how we're in the kitchen here. Um, I like adding some foreground and, you know, when possible, shooting into the living room, and then this leads into the hallway, into the main foyer. So you shoot that, but then, you know, you also get the front, the straight on shot, which is nice. Um, and that's, I don't know, again, I find these are the shots that generally the designers will use on their social media and things. So it just, it's different. It just feels different. Um, it's not super wide and wonky. Like, you know, if I had shot this on a 12, this room would look gigantic. It wouldn't look like you were really in the room. It would look like, yeah, like a fisheye. You know what I mean? Like you've seen a lot of those real estate guys and they shoot and it looks very fisheye and it, it's 
doesn't look pleasing, right? So you gotta find a reasonable angle, so, or a reasonable, um, kind of like, you know, the, the wideness of the, the lens. You don't wanna go too crazy with it. And so I find 16 has actually been really good. And then again, 12 millimeter only, 12 millimeter only when the room is super tight. So this, again, another example showing the, um, the space and how the rooms interconnect. Um, I thought this was really cool here. Um, and I'll show you how I, I lighten this up later. Um, and then, yeah, kind of a straight shot here at a different angle, showing some, some foreground depth and just, yeah, adds interest, something, something different. And that's another thing too. Um, I think the biggest thing for me when I started was I didn't know whether, you know, you want how high to go. So, you know, right now I'm just a little bit over the centerpiece here, but you know, do you go higher up and then, uh, get more eye level with this or do you go lower down and and you know especially with these um with these shots when i was first starting out i wasn't sure you know if you go too low you don't get any of the countertop if you go too high then then it you know it, it doesn't capture the space in the same way so you gotta find immediate you know a kind of a, a reasonable level that kind of captures the different surface areas and what you can do is also if you don't know take a couple so go low go high go chest level and then that will give you options in post right um there's no right or wrong you know it, as long as you know the only thing you're trying to do is is keep this relatively straight obviously i still need to um keystone it later on keystoning is making sure that um all the vertical lines are straight and, and they don't intersect to each other so that's something i do at the very end and i'll show you but it's yeah see it's not too bad here it's relatively straight take that shot and yeah you get a good view of what's going on in the room and how the house flows, right? So anyways, let's start uh, with, with this guy. So when I get into Lightroom, I'll have them all. There'll be a whole whack of them. And you highlight the three, because now these are the three different exposures, and we're going to stitch them together. Um, you go to Photo Merge, and I'm using Lightroom. Um, but you, yeah, you can do this in Photoshop as well. But the reason I use Lightroom is because it's just easier to go through the whole catalog here. And I like the exposure options and, and kind of the adjustment options that we have in Lightroom. Um, I will use Lightroom to uh, mid get the, for photo editing, true photo editing, the, the tones, the highlights, the exposures. And then I will use Photoshop for photo manipulation. So if there's like, you know, dirty spots here and there or smudges or uh, reflections that I need to remove, you know, sometimes you're in it, if you can't, you know, you can't help certain things, then that's where you would go into Photoshop and make those adjustments thereafter. But I always start here in Lightroom first. So we're in the newest Lightroom CC, um, or right, sorry, Lightroom Classic, but um, yeah, the cloud membership. But okay, so photo merge, then you go to HDR. I leave that on auto and auto align because you're gonna want it to align because chances are you will, you know, your tripod moves here and there. And so cool, you get a little preview and that looks pretty good. Um, if, if you have any movement, you can play around with this deghosting, um, but we're indoors, so shouldn't be any concern there. So merge, we'll let that run. Okay, when it's done, you'll notice this here, it's got these little boxes. That is the new merged version. So if we take a look at that, you know, if you're coming from here to dark, it's okay, missing some highlights. That actually, you know, because you don't have any super um, hot spots as far as any really strong light sources, be it in the lamps, because these were off and the lights were actually, there's a big window, which is nice and diffused. Um, you could probably even just edit off this one raw, but for most, you know, for most data and dynamic range, then you merge them. So this allows you to pull back some highlights, allows you to lift your shadows a lot more. It gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, and this file is now massive because you got to think it's three photos in one. So there's just a lot more data to use. And you'll notice right now, um, there's a certain clarity that came through the, you know, the outdoor right now, uh, that all brought back data, right? Cause you didn't have it here and, and yeah, you're going to have a lot more flexibility. So just a good, good thing to do. Um, and the nice thing is HDR, um, these technologies have gotten a lot better in Lightroom and in Photoshop. In the past, when I first started, it looked very HDR. There's a lot of haloing and it looked really strange and funky. Whereas now this looks supernatural. Like, you know, if you didn't know, you, you 
you probably wouldn't think this is three photos in one, or you may wonder how you would have got it because there is so much dynamic range. But anyways, you know, suffice it to say, things have gotten a lot better. So anyways, um, normally where I would start with, if I was doing wedding photos or just kind of fashion lifestyle, like other photography, other than interior shots um, or uh, certain product shots, I would actually add my own um, my own presets and play around with that and use that as a, as a base. But with interior photography, I actually leave it as is. Um, I like the colors coming out of Fuji. And what I do is just, you know, you want to portray what the eye is seeing and what the space really looks like. So I can't make it teal and orange. I can't add, um, you know, crazy effects or, or color, you know, to it. I want to keep it as natural as possible. So I don't use any presets. Um, I will adjust one photo and then use that for as a preset for the the rest of the batch but it, it's kept very natural um, nothing too wild it's more just exposure changes really and some texture okay so in here we'll get into this and the first I kind of look at it like first round you're kind of just playing around and you don't have to be too finicky at first because you can always go back and change it you're just trying to dial in the you know kind of kind of get things to where you are you know 80 percent happy and so I'll start with just exposing it a little bit here. I know I'm going to change it later with some of the other points, but something like maybe here. Um, and I believe it actually added something. So actually, sorry, let me just reset this because it added its own thing to it. So I will go to here. And a lot of times I'll, I'm just using the arrow right now, arrow up and down. When you hover over these points, um, you can use arrow up and down to adjust it by, you know, by 0.5 or 10, whatever it naturally defaults to, but it allows you to make easier micro adjustments than me trying to drag it with my mouse. But um, what I'll do is I'll just generally go to a point where I'm like, okay, that's too hot or too much, and then just back it off a little bit. And that, you know, you can always change later, right? So contrast, just maybe a little touch, maybe like 10. Highlights, we'll bring down just a little bit. That way you see this, it brings back some of the outside. Maybe not too much. Um, shadows, I'll bring up just a little bit. See these dark areas here? So my, let's so take a look at those. So, you know, your shadows there. And it depends. If, if you want more of a contrasty look, you can. I'm trying to go for something that has detail but is as neutral as possible. Generally, clients like that. They don't want anything too, too stylized if it's an interior shot. So, again, you want it to be polished but something that if someone walked in this room or went to check out this house they would be they would be like okay yeah it looks like that you know you don't want to convey something that looks completely different if someone goes to visit it and they're like oh yeah that looked way different or that color really different or what you know whatever it may be but you want them to you know to be okay with the photo that you you created because it's gotta it's gotta match right can't be too too off so anyways we'll just boost that a little bit because i'll bring back back the blacks that brings back the contrast there and the white. So this is overall, and I'll show you here. So it's kind of, kind of the dullness, like how much white you want. So are we going more gray? Are we going to go more vibrant? And in this room, I'm going to go a little, yeah, a little brighter there. Even at that, that looks great to me. Um, I'll add the texture a little bit. Let's see. So this one, I'll just use my mouse. So you can crank it up. A lot of times, if you don't know what it does, just, yeah, grab your mouse and just crank it up and crank it down, and then you can see what that does. So texture is uh, better to bring down if you're doing, like, people and portraits for skins. Um, but for interiors, definitely have more detail so we can... You don't want to go too crazy because then it just looks, like, synthetic or fake. I want it to look natural, so just a little bit. Yeah. Um, clarity, dehaze. Dehaze can kind of... Yeah, it can just it can bring back extra clarity for you. I know clarity's here, maybe that's a bad word, but it brings back some sharpness and depth. So see, if you go there, see how like the color gets punched up and um yeah. I know if you go here it kinda washes everything away. So I'll just put just a little bit. And then vibrance, I like to Oh, we're glitching out here. Uh about there yeah and then saturation I'll bring down a couple notches so let's see maybe 10 there you go so yeah I think that looks good to me 
So from here, the only thing to do is, you know, you can kind of go through. If you really didn't want this white here, we can go into Photoshop and kind of take that out. But I think that's fine for me. Matches reflection there. Nothing's too, too crazy. So that's great. Okay. So, um, okay. Actually, so yeah, I, I want to bring this up. When you're looking at this, these two guys, so the Silverleaf home, this is actually a super ideal, super easy home to um, to photograph and to video, actually. This main area, this, this kitchen to here is super easy because you have this large window spilling in natural light. So I can keep all the incandescent or the uh, tungsten lights off, so all the interior lights off. And it's easy. White balance is out really well. Looks nice, clean, and crisp. Um, it's a dream. You know, here, not a single light, just the side light. Boom. It is, you know, it's so ideal. So the challenge is something like this. This is generally what you're going to come into, especially kitchen stuff, because kitchens, um, you know, living rooms, you can get away without lights, but kitchens, there are always going to be lights. So it's how do you show the details of the lights uh, when you have some exterior lights coming through and this is very yellow but this is white and it can be a nightmare to be honest with you um but you're just gonna have to find a balance and i don't think you know the only way i could get this to kind of look like this color wise would be if i brought in a bunch of flashes or did a bunch of flash photography merged them all together masked it and and yeah it really took the time with that so that's a different process in itself it's a whole another beast but anyways let's show you how or how i would go about this as i do have to go about this because i i'm delivering this this week so again grab the three go photo merge hdr let it do its thing and yeah see how it added some of its own jazz here we'll just reset that so i have a clear slate okay so i'm gonna just again same process let's bring this up to about here is too much so I'll back it off a little bit give me a starting point there pump a little contrast highlights i'll bring down just a bit but i don't want to get it too dark so as the windows get darker so do these panels here right so you want to just be cognizant of that kind of watching what it affects um shadows obviously bring up my main areas right now i'm seeing are there could be one you know dark spots here here in this room so i'm minding those as i move along so that's too much right it's all kind of washed out and see what i mean if, if you've left like this sure it's, it's all bright or whatever but then that's not really what the eye sees it looks hdr it looks fake because it looks like you just artificially pumped lights in here which i have right it, yeah so i think it's okay to have some shadows so you got to find that median so let's just stay there for now whites i'm gonna definitely pump up the white a little bit I want the overall brightness now the black this will bring back some of that contrast so let's just say here and texture go up a touch that's good and you can just pump in or just zoom in to see yeah we're still nice and crisp we're good works for me so now, as I look at this, I mean, physically, the space is great. I like the composure. It's, you know, it's awesome. You know, I, I'm okay with it. Um, but, you know, there's an overall, you know, ideally, it'd be cool if, if I want to take a bunch of time and mask things out and, and whatever and, and, you know, make this pure white and keep this a touch yellow but not too much. It's... Um, it gets really complex, or I guess it can be as complex as you want it to be. So what I'm going to do is first, again, let's go. Sorry, I forgot these two. Vibrance up, saturation down a little bit. Now we're going to jump into some of the HSL. So this is where we can really, the hue, saturation, and luminance is where we can really manipulate the colors and what we're seeing. So first off, um, I know that there's a lot of yellow here, and I'm seeing magenta, purplish here, right? And so I'm just going to change um, the yellows a little bit. So for example, this one, yellow becomes more on the green side. Move it down, it goes more on the orange side. And I'd rather just more in the orange. I like I like warmth um, in the orange. You can play it to see that it becomes more reddish or a little more yellow. So I'll just maybe touch it a little bit to the right. 
Um, that's good for now. So saturation, okay, this is where we're going to see some bigger differences. Um, I There's a lot of blue and green going on here. We don't need this blue because your eye kind of jumps over here and it doesn't match the main tones that are here. Because mainly it's just whites, golds, yellows, some green pockets. So the blues we can actually just bring down. And you'll notice it desaturates it there. Um, same with the aquas. And just to show you where they come through because you can also just yeah see if i pump them up you'll see the areas that are hot for blue or you know really pumped with blue here it's there and back here so i'll just bring down both blue and aqua and then greens it's kind of preference whether you kind of want the brighter greens or kind of muted greens mm, kind of like both but i think more on the muted side is generally just personal preference again, that's where I go, but okay, so yellows, you see, pump it up there, bring it down. So I'm gonna just desaturate the yellows a touch, same with the oranges a little bit. Um, yeah, so again, you're, you're kind of, again, personal preference, but you're going by, you know, how it looks to you, because obviously you want to keep the yellows, I want to keep the yellows here, um, but I want to take a little away from the walls because the walls are white. But, you know, when you look at a room, especially with these types of lights, there, there is going to be yellow cast. This room is not going to look white when you go into the room. So in my mind, this is okay. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the reds, you can play around with that. But yeah, not much going on there. So it's mainly the, the orange is the big component here. You know what I mean? Like if you really pulled it down, but then it just looks desaturated, right? It doesn't look vibrant doesn't look lively so you don't want to suck all the life out of it you just want to tone it down a little bit so that seems all right um from there you can also play with the luminance as well you know if you wanted the greens um to really pop see what i mean so again up to you um these ones I'll kind of keep a little lower. You can just play around and see how things are affected. So yeah, it's a nice part here is more detail there, but then everything's a little brighter there. So you gotta make make a choice. I think I'm gonna go on the lighter side just a little bit. Okay, and then when we go up to here, the, we're going to go back here. And some people start off with the white balance. Um, I don't know. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But let's just see if we bring down the overall white balance, make it a little cooler. How does that look? Hmm. Again, you don't want it too cold because cold isn't inviting, you know, especially in a, a home where you're living, where you're, you're hosting. So just something in between. So just so for example, see, this is too cool and this is too warm. So I'm just gonna find something in between here. I think that that works for me. So that when you're looking here, you're still seeing that these surfaces are white. Yes, there's some cast, um, but I think that's okay. That's a good balance. Now, the only other thing I would do is I turn this light on here to try to light this back room because I, you know, sometimes I've been in issues and I forgot to do that. If you, if you have a, if you're doing a shoot of a room that leads into another, try to light that room too. Um, otherwise it's just like a, you know, imagine if this was a completely dark, you know, square here, or rectangle, it just, this dark spot would just look really weird. It would really draw your eye to it. So what I'm going to do is try to balance this area out with the rest of, um, the space. So we'll grab a brush and I'm just doing this by hand. Just quickly here. Okay. So I'll bring so natural so default was exposure was up, so you can see where it was. Um, I might put exposure up just a bit, but let's go to the shadows first and see what that can do for us so we're getting level there and yeah again you're kind of just eyeballing it right whatever looks good to you 
I don't want it to be too bright that it stands out, but I want it to be bright enough that it blends with it a little bit, kind of evens it out so it doesn't completely draw your eye if it's too bright or too dark, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Maybe something like that. So we can check here We can go, this little block here is kind of toggles the, uh, it doesn't kind of, it does toggle uh, the section on and off. So you kind of get an idea. Okay. And if I go done there, and just as a reference, sometimes, you know, if you go backslash, hit backslash, you'll see before and after, oops, I hit delete there, before and after. Yeah, and I think that's good. You know what I mean? Like you can see outside, but it's not a whole lot going on that we need to see. Um, I mean, be better if this stuff, whatever this is, it wasn't there. Um, but we wanted light coming through, so we couldn't, you know, we didn't close all the panels. Otherwise, it would look too enclosed or kind of trapped feeling. You want it to look open and, um, yeah, bring that natural light in too. So I think this is a good balance. It's a good balance of both. Um, we also have some nice shadows up here that the client wanted to see because they, they thought it was a nice nice touch of uh, the way the, the fixtures um, you know, cast that light. And so that was kind of cool. So yeah, I think that's good. And hopefully they'll be happy with that. So I would do the same with this one. This one actually is even easier because or it should be. So let's see. And the reason I say it should be easier is anytime you're dealing with an image that isn't shot against windows, um, or as much, uh, the expose, yeah, just the overall white balance and exposure and just everything comes together a lot easier. Um, it's when you're facing a lot of windows and a lot of um, backlighting that things get more complicated. And this goes for uh, portraiture, weddings, like all that. There are times when you want it and there are times when you don't. So, okay, so let's take this. And what you can do is, like I said, when you have a, a recipe, a formula, um, or in this case, a preset, if you will, you can just control C, or in this case, command C, um, and then here I will reset this, Command V, and it's applied all that except for the masking. And in this case, it's too bright. This was already a brighter image. So let's bring that down a little bit. Shadows. It's good. White. Uh, a little bit, but not too much. Blacks are good. That's good. Yeah, this is. A, <laughs> um, sorry, I hesitated there because I. It's kind of hard to explain, but at every different every monitor um, or viewing technology is going to be a little different. So depends on the device you're on. I guess that was the word I was looking for. Um, you know, if I look at it as an iPhone, it might be a little different. If I look at this on, on a PC, it's going to be a little different. If I look at this on a Mac, it's going to be different. Um, so that's, yeah, unless you have one of those 100% uh, RGB or um, photo editing monitors. Uh, but even then, you could be yours could be perfect and, and viewed well, but then when someone else looks at it, it kind of looks off or too dark or too bright. So... Again, you can model, you know, like right here, I'm just kind of mulling over, like, do I go a little brighter, a little darker? But what I'll, what you generally do or what I generally do is just get it to a point where you think it looks good and then view it on your phone because that's where people are going to do it. They're going to, you know, when I view it on my phone, then I can know if I'm too dark or not. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's kind of the tricky part when everyone's using different devices. How do you sync it up to give the best experience? You, you can't really. Um do what you can and then just view it on a couple different devices you have at home and and see what works and try to find that again kind of a median between all of them right so same thing this is good uh, i really like this um yeah the whites come a lot whiter less cast in this one again because different angle um uh, just the nature of the beast and then we can uh, cover to the edges there so i don't want to hit the edges too much
So I'll just paint this in. Okay. Reset that. Go to shadows. bit bit of exposure and then yeah you see I missed the corner so I'm gonna make your brush a bit smaller just tap a couple times in the corner it's just the way the uh, the feathering was so you can just add to it it's good okay um, even in that you can also even just take down, see how it's just a lot more yellow back here? Because this, this light was super yellow. Because um, there's no natural light balancing it out. So I can go to the temperature and maybe just bring it down a little bit. Not too blue, not too yellow, but just maybe 10, negative 10. Yeah. Let's see. Double check it. I mean, yeah, works for me. So that's it, and then double check, see, it's kind of pretty drastic difference, right? Um, oh yeah, I'll go back to these two. I forgot the last step, which I mentioned before was keystoning. And you can either do it in uh, in here by drawing physical lines or in Photoshop, you can skew and warp and um, make the lines straight. But what we're talking about is, is these vertical lines. This should be straight, this should be straight, this, this, any vertical line here um, should be straight. So right now you look at it, you can either say, oh, okay, it looks like maybe it's kind of off kilter landscape wise, or is it these lines are warped? What is it? Just go to auto first, and then we can kind of play around from there. So when you go down to transform in this section, I usually go auto and yeah, it, that looks off to me, right? Like it was close, but what it does is it's finding a balance between this horizontal line and this vertical line. And it looks off. This seems a little higher this side to me. But maybe I'm just, yeah, to me. So anyways, I would take this into Photoshop and um, manually uh, adjust it myself. I believe this one shouldn't be too bad. So this one, see, has a little, the gap here. So to me, that line is a little bit skewed. So let's go auto. And that's better. That looks straight. Everything's looking better. This one worked quite well. You can also play around. So if we go back to the other photo here, you can go um, vertical lines and it prioritizes the vertical lines or pri prioritizes the, the horizontal, which is level. So maybe something like this might be okay. Kind of depends. This is maybe on the better side. Yeah. So if we go to auto, it was trying to do both. Level, level seems better. Yeah. So I will likely Still taking a Photoshop, double check the lines and everything, but this is a lot better than the auto. So, so yeah, the last step is the the keystoning, the making sure your verticals are straight. And my apologies, I forgot to mention that my thirty five millimeter for um, detail shots. So I'll show you a couple of the the detail shots actually. These are unedited, but you get an idea. So detail shots would be of the lights or um, of the different fixtures, this kind of thing, right? So you're, I'll go right down to like 1.4, F2, that kind of thing, and then try to grab really nice details. In this one, obviously, I'm good. I already see it. There's a spot there, some smudges here. So those are things you have to clean, uh, clean up in post. Um, this one, I'll definitely be cleaning up in Photoshop. And let's see what else here. No. Uh, there you go. This is, yeah. So these types of shots are done with the 35 millimeter one four. And what I'm looking for is, yeah, you bringing out that bokeh, doing those artistic type shots, right? You're really going to highlight the elements that are in the room. So these are supplementary to the wider full shots that we just did. So, you know, you do a couple like this of details of the range hood can get even tighter and do, you know, the bolts. So I'm just grabbing a variety of shots and this way, again, my client has a ton of options so that they can use it and, and talk about these points, right? You know, it's a cool light fixture here. So let's do that. And, um, 
this doorknob was really cool kind of this like clear glass crystal type feel so they wanted that um, wallpaper textures definitely grab shots of that so so yeah get creative and and again go high go eye level go low and you know bounce around and you'll you'll see what works and, and what's good um this one's a tough one so i didn't really uh have to finagle this one quite a bit but anyways this is 12 millimeter and again reserved for these types of shots where there's really not much you can do like it's a super tight space and so yeah you've got kind of this angle and that's about it and uh and yeah definitely a lot of keystoning or fixing of those verticals i'll have to do but um but yeah the this is but an, uh, an example of what the rokinon would be great for okay um and just quickly here maybe i'll do a separate video because this one's probably getting quite long um but i wanted to show you what uh the videos i did so again when i'm on site i always try to try to grab some video clips because customers seem to like that and again it gives them variety in the content so it's not just photos all the time so this is an easy one you know it's just yeah highlighting the light fixture it loops back and forth so that's an instagram one made into a square um what do we got here same thing kind of looping through from a different perspective you're kind of running through the kitchen hit the centerpiece pops back up so that's nice this one is uh, i added their design in this one so it's just a slow rotation of the full view kind of goes back and forth back and forth and then i'll do a full version which is Yeah, super short, nice and sweet, just shows the highlight of the, the place and um, has their information at the end, that kind of thing. So so yeah, those are extra add-ons that you can give to them and it's extra money in your pocket because now you can charge a little more for those video components. So anyways, I, I know that was a long one, but hopefully it was helpful seeing that walkthrough, seeing my approach to it. And uh, yeah, you don't need a whole lot of gear, basically a nice wide lens, a nice uh, portrait lens, and then you're off to the races. A lot of it comes down to the editing and uh, understanding how to use this. But uh, but yeah, with YouTube University, it shouldn't be any issues. So uh, let me know if there are any questions about uh, interior um, photography or video, that kind of stuff. But uh, I will slowly start making more of these types of videos to walk through things. The next one will be a uh, product photography shoot. We have some products coming in for... Um, a client that has jewelry there's one that's doing a um a sports box so it's like you know gatorade protein bars that kind of thing uh, we're gonna do some shoots for ayas candles and hand sanitizers so yeah tons of practical stuff because at the end of the day to be honest with you um other than websites the bigger bigger money makers for us is product photos and interior design photos um you know as much as we love doing branding and you know branding content and lifestyle shots for brands those don't pay as much definitely interior photography and product photography have been bigger ticket items for us um so that's why yeah i want to make this video first because if you are thinking about making money with photography it's definitely yeah, a way to get your feet wet and and make some good money while you're doing it so okay till next time guys thanks for watching see ya